Hello learners. I welcome you all to this course on building construction step by step with AutoCAD drawings. So before we uh, get into the course, I want you people to understand the sequence of construction project, right? Who is a client? Uh, who is the architect? What is the role of an architect? What is the role of a structural engineers, right? How we are going to release the drawings, how we are going to do the design of a building, all these things we need to understand. And once we understand that, we all are set enough to understand the construction methodology or the sequence of construction that is called as execution of the project. So my entire course is on the execution of the project where I'll be explaining you guys on how the excavation is to be done, what is PCC and how the footing layout will be marked, how the shuttering will be put up, what is concreting, what is beams, how you put up the beam reinforcement, how you put up the column reinforcement, uh, how, how the slab reinforcement looks, all these things is covered in my course for more than 20 hours. Right? Uh, and also we'll be understanding how to read the structural drawings, how to read the footing layout, how to read the column details, how to read the uh, uh, beam details, how to read the slab details, and what all are the technical things that is covered in the code books. We'll be covering everything in depth. But before that, I want you people to understand how the sequence of the construction is going to happen. So we'll quickly get into that and we'll try to understand them. Yeah. So let us say you are a client to me, right? You are a client and you have come to me. So I'm an architect and I'm a structural engineer. So let us say you want to, you have a plan of constructing a one BHK house or you have a plan of constructing a two BHK house or you have a plan of constructing a three BHK house. So we'll try to understand what is BHK. If you know it is well and good. If you don't know, I'll explain it for you. One BHK stands for one bedroom, one hall and one kitchen. When I say two BHK, then I have two bedroom and a one hall and one kitchen. And when I say three BHK, that means I have three bedroom, one hall and one kitchen. So this is what we call if it is a four BHK, it's understood that we, we need to have four bedroom, one hall and one kitchen. And if it is a five BHK, we need to have a uh, five bedroom uh, and uh, one hall and one kitchen. Sometimes the kitchen may be two also, like if it is a five BHK and then we'll have a ground floor and the first floor. So you may have a one kitchen in the ground floor and one kitchen in the top floor, but it depends on the client, how we want to do it. Right. Or let us say you have a plan of constructing a bungalow or let us say you want to construct a residential project like you want to construct some big apartments or let us say you have a plan of constructing a commercial building let us say you want to put up a big uh, commercial project like you want to you know uh, build a shopping complex so all these are your requirement right you have a land with you uh, and you want to make use of that land and let us say you want to construct all these things so you have come to me your approach to me i'm an architect and i'm a structural engineer so I'm going to design, I'm going to do a planning for this particular uh, space and I'm going to uh, release the drawings for this particular uh, project. So how we are going to uh, understand the sequence, we'll try to see that, right? So once you approach to me, what I'm going to do as an architect and a structural engineer, I'm going to give you an architectural plan. So what do you mean by architectural plan? So you have an area, let us say you have a plot and you have a certain area there. So your plan is to construct a bungalow. So you come to me. So what I'm going to do, I'll give you a plan saying that this is where your kitchen comes. This is where your bedroom comes. This is where your uh, living hall comes. So this is your size of the bedroom. This is the length of your, you know, this is the breadth of your bedroom. This is the length of your bedroom. This is where the washing machine comes. This is where the utility area is. This is where the car, can, you know, car parking space will happen. All these things I'm going to uh, mark on a plan and I'm going to give it back to you. So how I'm going to do, there is a software called AutoCAD. With the help of a software called AutoCAD, I'm going to do it for you. So we'll try to understand that. First, I'll be showing you the plan. Yeah. So let us say, uh, first let us say, I want, uh, if you want, if you, if you want a one BHK plan, this is how I'm going to do it for you. I have a bedroom here, which is 10 feet by nine feet by nine inch. And this is a door here from, from here. We have a hall, which is 10 feet by 13 feet. Then I have a toilet here, which is five feet by six feet. I have a kitchen here, which is six feet by nine and a half feet. And I have a deck here that is called as a utility area, 
where you can wash your utensils and uh, not a utensils you can you know uh, it's like a, where you can keep your washing machine and you can do all those activities here so this is the entrance here from here you are entering into your home this is a 1 bhk plan let us say you don't want 1 bhk plan and you, you have a plan of constructing a 5 bhk bungalow in that case this is a, another drawing i'm releasing for you um, this is another drawing i'm releasing for you uh, you can observe it here right so this is a place where your car a car is going to park and from here you are taking the entrance lobby from here this is my main door this is the main door i am entering into my home this is the foyer a small sit out where you can sit and from there you are entering into the living room the dimension of the living room is 20 feet by 15 feet this is 20 feet and this is 15 feet then from here you are entering into the dining area this is the dining area uh, and from the dining area you can enter into the kitchen so this kitchen is of 14 feet by 13 feet. You have a utility area here where you can wash your utensils and all. And also you have a storeroom here. From here you're going out and you have a small puja room here. Uh, yeah, you have a small puja room from here. There's a door here. And there's a small sofa set which is kept here so that you can sit here. Then you have a master bedroom here. I'll try to move it here. Yeah, and you have a master bedroom here. For the same master bedroom, you have a dresser here and you have an attached toilet here. So from here, come here, you have another master bedroom here. You can call this as the guest bedroom. We are entering from here. Again, you have a dresser here and you have a toilet here. And this is, a, this is how the bed is placed. So yeah, and you have a stair from here. This is a ground floor what we are seeing. You can see here, right? It's written ground floor plan. So you have a staircase here. So let us say from, the, from this staircase, you're going to the first floor. So this is a plan what I've given for you. You, you had a intention of constructing a 5 BHK or you had a constructor, uh, you had an intention of putting up a bungalow. So this is a plan what I'm giving. So when I release the drawing, I'm not going to release a single drawing. I know that uh, you may you may not like this particular drawing. In that case, I'll, I'll release two, three drawings. So that is why we, you can see here the option one. This is the first option. If you like it, we can go ahead. If you don't like it, I'm going to give you another option. This is the second option what I have. Again, the parking is here. We have an entrance lobby here. We have a foyer here. So this time the living room is here, but here it here what happened? The living room was here, right? But here what has happened? The living room is here and you have your bedroom here. Uh, you have a bedroom here and you have a dresser here and you have a toilet here and the dining area remains the same. But this time I have a staircase here, but in the previous uh, plan, the staircase was put up in this direction. Whereas in this plan, I have put up my staircase here and I have a toilet here and a dresser here. You have a master bedroom here, a puja room here, a kitchen here, and you have a store to this kitchen. And this is a utility area which you can come from the kitchen, right? So this is the second plan I'm giving. Uh, so that is why it's written here, option two. Even if you don't like this plan, I'm going to give you another plan which says that uh, this is the entrance what you have. So far the entrance was from here, but right now the entrance is from here and you are entering into the foyer. From the foyer, you directly have a living room here of 20 feet by 15 feet and from here you are entering into the kitchen where you have your store and you have your utility utility and this is my dining area again i have not changed the position of the staircase the position of the staircase is same from here i have a master bedroom the same thing follows the dresser the toilet you have another master bedroom here you have a toilet here you have a dresser here and this time the puja room is here and you have a small sofa set kept sofa set uh, kept here so this is the third option I'm giving you. Even if you don't like this, I'm going to give you one more option. So in this particular option, let us say, you are, this is a place where you're going to park your vehicle. It's written parking area, which is of 14 feet by 32 feet. And then you have a small sit out here. You have a foyer here. You have a formal or a, formal or a living room here. That is where your family members can gather and you can watch, you can spend your time here. And from here, you have a dining area. Again, from the dining area, you can enter into the kitchen. Uh, this is a D stand for door, D1, D2, what you can see here, right? So all this other door. And from this kitchen, you can enter into the storeroom. And from the same kitchen, you can enter into the utility area where you have a wash basin and a sink. Yeah, I mean, you have a sink here so that you can wash your utensils. From there, you are entering into the master bedroom. From the master bedroom, you have a place to enter into the dresser. And from here, you can enter into the toilet. Again, you have a puja room here, which is nine feet by nine feet. This is nine feet and this is nine feet. And you have a bedroom here, which is 13 feet by 17 feet. 
and from here you are going to take the staircase and here you have a rear entry which that is a backside entry we call and you have a rear sit out here and you have a toilet here this is adjacent to the staircase this is a plan what i'm giving so one yeah this is a plan what i'm giving so out of this three to four plans you may like any one of the plan and once you fix that this is the final plan that i require i'll go with the analysis and the designing concept so what do you mean by analysis and designs so far the plan what you can see right here only the position of the rooms that is where the bedroom comes right where the formal or the living room comes where the dining area comes where the kitchen comes only those things are mentioned here right and also uh, the positions of the column you can see this right so these are the column all these are the all these are the columns what you can see all these are the columns these are the columns but so far i have never told you that what is the size of your footing what is the size of your column what is the size of the beam what is the size size of the i mean what is the thickness of the slab what is the reinforcement that you are going to use those things we have never done it just we are in the initial stage where we are yet to finalize the plan once we finalize the plan next i am going to do the design i mean analysis and the design and after that we are going to see for this particular building what is the load coming for that particular load what kind of footing i need to provide what should be the depth of my footing what should be the size of my column what should be the size of my beam what should be the thickness of my slab and what should be the reinforcement what is the grade of a concrete all these things we are going to see later as of now still we are in the initial stage right so all these are the options what i am what i am giving you that is why you can see here the option this is the fourth option right so this was a plan of one particular building we'll try to go ahead again so let us say yeah so this is a plan of another 2 bhk building it's a 2 bhk written here again you have a open sit out here you have a drawing room here you have a puja room here you have a bedroom here you have a dining store kitchen and all so this is a plan of another 3 bhk plan again you have a entry from here you have a drawing room here you have a dining room you have a kitchen you have a bedroom you have a toilet you have a bedroom here you have another bedroom here there is a attached toilet to that so this all are the different plans what we actually give based on your requirement we are going to give you the plan right so this is another 3 bhk plan what you can see same thing you have a bedroom bedroom and bedroom so that is why it's called as 3 bhk you have a balcony you have a dining and a living a toilet and all right so all these things what what we are going to do we are going to do the planning in this way and based on this planning if if the client like let us say you are a client to me so if you say you are interested in this particular plan let us go back let us say this is a final plan what you are interested uh, only once you say this plan is done i'm going to do the designing for this so so far what we spoke was only about the house plans and all so i'll show you one drawing uh, where we'll be concentrating on the residential project so this is one of a project of a residential project okay so we'll try to concentrate here you have a uh, so this is how it is it's a uh, this is made uh, with the help of autocad software you can see it here autodesk autocad so with the help of autocad we do all these things so you have a bedroom here right you have another master bedroom here this is a bed what is put up here you can keep your wardrobes here you have a attached toilet and again you have a, a attached toilet here again you have a attached toilet here this is a commode what you can see this is a kitchen you have a sink this is this is a, a gas what you have and this is a sink what we have right and this is a dining area and this is a dining table you can see and this is a c bedroom stand for children's bedroom or let us say you have a guest bedroom and this is another living area this is a puja room so you have a lift here and this is a lobby here you enter you, this is how you enter into your home this is a this is a plan of a residential project this is this is how your plot looks this is your plot what you have so for this plot we have done this planning so we are going to give a plan in this way right so this is how it looks so this is a this is one wing this is your second wing this is the third wing and everywhere you are going to see the same plan you are going to see the same plan kitchen you have study room you have attached toilet so everywhere you are going to see the same plan so based on the client requirement what the client need what is the area that is having based on that we are going to do the planning in this way i hope you guys have understood up to here so once all the planning are done again you have to observe one one thing nowhere in this plan the reinforcement details uh the size of the column nothing is mentioned here only what you can see is the beam i mean the uh, column column locations have been put up these are the column the one which is in blue color all these are the columns so column usually we put and give usually uh, when we give the plan we put up the column location this is how the column location 
these are the column locations what you can see right the one which is in blue color all these are the column locations right yeah we'll go back to that uh, ppt again yeah so once the architecture plan is done with the help of autocad or also we have a software called revit so revit is another software where we can do the planning we'll try to see that software as well so this is how a revit software looks we'll try to see that So this is another software which is called as Revit, Revit architecture. In this Revit architecture, I'm going to do a plan. It's again the same thing, what you can see here. But here, what is happening, you're going to get a 3D view and you're going to get anything. Let I mean, you're going to get everything here. So let us say this is the office building, what I have put up. So I have an entrance for this office from here. And we'll try to see this. And uh, once you enter the office, uh, you have a sit out here. I have put my sofa sets here. And this is one office room where the person will sit here. The guest will be sitting here, right? So this is a window what I have put up. And then we have another room here. Then we have another room here. We have a door to this room. And this is a place where the person sits. And we have a locker and we have the storage, you know, uh, I mean the st storage racks kept here. Then also, this is another room. We have a sofa set put up here. Then you have a window here and this is how it looks if you're looking at it from the top this is how it looks so the uh, the visitors will come and sit here uh, and the person and the officers who are in charge of them of this particular building they'll sit here and they have a storage rack kept here so these are the things what we usually do so once we finalize the plan uh, so let me show you how the plan looks So this is not the plan. Okay, uh, we, I don't have a plan here. So that is how it usually looks. I hope it's understood. So this is a second software what we can make use of that is called as Revit architecture, right? That is what I mentioned it here. That is what I mentioned here, Ar Revit. Revit is another software what you can make use, right? So along with that, there's one more software what we use that is called as Google SketchUp and we have AutoCAD 3D these days. So we'll try to see that. So what, what, what will happen? We'll understand this again. So what will happen? Once we are done with all these uh, drawings, the one bungalow which I showed you, that is a drawing uh, what we have finalized so far. So that I'm going to send back to the client. So you are a client to me and I'm sending the drawing back to you saying that uh, I have given you three, four options. You can select any one of them. So let us say finally I've decided one plan and I'm sending the drawing back to you. So you have finally said that the plan which the option for which I showed you there, that is the one which you want to uh, go with. So once that is done, what I'm going to do, if you say yes, then I'm going to do the design for this analysis and design. So that is called as analysis and designing. So analysis and designing, we can make use of softwares like ETAPS. We have a software like StatPro. Even we can make use of software like SAFE. If you want to design uh, heavy foundations and all, if you uh, in that case, we make use of a software called SAFE. Along with that, we can make use of another software that is called as CSI Bridge. So far, what we discussed was only about the residential and the commercial projects. Just in case, if you want to put up a bridge, if you get a government projects and you want to put up a bridge, in that case, we need to make use of a software called CSI Bridge. CSI Bridge. So all these are the different softwares we are going to make use of that. With the help of this software, what I'm going to do for that particular plan, I'm going to put the load on your structure. I'm going to put the load on the structure that what, what is a dead load coming on it? What is a live load coming on it? Right? So all these things I'm going to do the load. I'm going to put the load on the structure and based on that, I'm going to do the analysis. Once the analysis is done, I'm going to find the bending moment. I'm going to find the shear force. I'm going to see how much steel is going to come. What is the thickness of the slab? What is the dimension of the column? What is the dimension of the beam? All these things I'm going to do analysis and designing. And finally, once everything is done, if I feel that for this particular plan, the load, what I've applied, if it is safe, only then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the, I'm going to release the drawings one by one. So, but before that, we'll try to see how this softest work out. As of now, I can show you only one software that is called a STAD Pro. So this is a software called STAD Pro. Uh, so this is how we create the model. So these are the building what we have created. 
you can see here right all these are the foundations all these are the foundations what we have put up and this is a simple frame what have uh, what have created it here so on this particular frame i'm going to apply the loan let us say this particular area is your bedroom so on the bedroom usually if you refer is for uh, um, indian standard code book of uh, is 875 part 2 the live load that comes in the bedroom is 2 kN per square meter. So I'm going to apply 2 kN per square meter load on this particular area. And then I'm going to do the analysis. You have a bedroom, you have a kitchen and all. So everywhere, let us say, based on that code book, I'm taking the load and I'm going to apply it. And also I'm going to apply the dead load on this. I'm going to do the analysis. Once I run the analysis, this software is going to give me the results saying that in this particular floor or let us say in this particular beam, this much amount of steel is coming. For that, we have to give Mm, that much i mean uh, i let us for that we have to give let us say 16 diameter 3 bar or 16 diameter 4 bar at the top and let us say 13 diameter 2 i mean sorry 12 diameter 3 bar in the bottom so this is how we do analysis and design i hope it's understood up to here we'll go back to that yeah so before that i want to add one more thing here yeah so once those things what let us say this is a plan what we have finalized right if you can remember, this is a plan what I finalized. This is a plan what you have finalized that this is a plan what you're going to go with. Along with this plan, this is just a plan what I've given. If you feel like you want to see how the building is going to look even before the construction, if, if let us say you want to see how your building is going to look uh, from the interior point of view, then what we do with help of a Google SketchUp software, what I showed you, uh, what we do, this is how we create. This is made, uh, this is made from Google SketchUp, I guess, or even with the help of Revit and with a kind of rendering, and with help of 3d max software we can do all these things so for that particular project what you're seeing you now this is how your project looks you have a parking here you have a foyer here this is a kitchen this is a formal room so this is just a plan you're not going to get an idea how this building is going to look for that what i'm going to do i'm going to draw something i'm going to do the 3d view of this so this is how it looks we have a parking here right that is what we saw and you will enter from here so this area is my kitchen this area is my um, living hall and uh, this is my uh, master bedroom and uh, this is my you know uh, yeah this is how it looks right along with that i'm going to release one more this is a two way this is this is one side elevation this is a second side elevation again the same thing it's entrance here you have a entry from here this is your living room and this is your guest bedroom you have a backside entry this is a rare uh, sit out and rare entry so this is how your building is going to look so along with that We'll try to see see this is this is from the interior point how your interior is going to look again you have a bedroom here right you have a tv stand here you have a small fridge here you have a dining area here you have a kitchen here and you have another bedroom here so this is how if if the client if, if the client wants to see all these things we are going to do as a planning and as a structural engineer uh, we are going to do all these things let us say you want to see how the 3d elevation is this is from a different building what i've taken if you want to see even how, how it looks when the lights and all are put up, then we are going to release even this drawing. This is a front elevation, what you can see. Along with that, this is so far what we saw was only the ground floor. Let us say you want to see even the top floor. You have a staircase here, and this is how your building is going to look. You have a you know bedroom here, there's a small living hall here, and you have another bedroom here. These are your wardrobes, and this is a small sit-out, a kind of you know gallery what you have here. So these are the drawings usually what we release. Uh, and these things are done with the help of Google SketchUp. We have a software like 3D Max and uh, with the kind of rendering and a VA, v, v Ray and all, we do all these things. So based on the client requirement, if the, if the client needs all these things, we are going to do all these things one by one. So these things can be done even with the help of AutoCAD. Let me show it for you. Yeah, even with the help of, let us say this is one, this is one more plan. Okay, uh, so let us say uh, this is a plan of a hospital building and you have a major operation theater here. You have a preparation room here. You have a baby corner here. You have a staff nurse here. You have a toilet room here. You have a preparation. You have a male ward. You have a you know female ward here. So this is how your building is going to look. Again, you can see the column locations have been put up. Huh? Along with that, what you can see is the front elevation. This is how your uh, building is going to look. If you're seeing your building from the front side, this is how it's going to look. This is the entry what we have and all these are the windows what you get. Along with that, this is how we, we are going to do each and everything. You can see it here, right? So everything we are going to do and we are going to release the drawing. I hope it's understood up to here. So we'll go back to that. Once everything is done, 
once the client requirement is satisfied whatever he wanted if when we have uh, whatever he wanted let us say 3d plan and all everything we are going to release him uh, when when the time comes so once those things are done once the analysis and start, once the analysis and designing is also done with the help of stad pro software we are going to release the drawings right so far we are still in the planning stage we have never done the execution of the project the same project has to be put up on the ground right so that is why what we do we release the drawing what we do is we release the drawings to the client for the construction so you are a client to me so i'll do i'll do the analysis and designing and i'm going to release a drawing to you saying that this is a footing drawing this is a column drawing this is a column reinforcement this is a beam this is a beam reinforcement and all the first drawing that we are always going to release is of course our architectural plan will be released first only when the architectural plan is finalized from structural point of view we are going to release the footing layout so i'm going to show you all these drawings we'll try to understand them the first drawing is the footing layout then we have a column layout then we have a plinth beam layout then we have a ground floor column reinforcement details we have a first floor beam details we have a first floor slab details we have a overhead tank details and if there is some miscellaneous like if you want to get a lintel a sill window everything whatever details you want to get everything we are going to release one by one based on the execution and based on your payment so we'll try to see that how these drawings are going to look yeah so this is the first drawing that i'm going to release which i told as footing layout or foundation layout both are one and the same you can see here right this is a foundation layout that means for the building what you have finalized we have to put the foundation right so this is the size of the foundation you need to put a six feet by seven seven feet foundation for uh, for a footing called um, f1 and there is another footing here called f1 which where you need to put uh, six feet by seven feet as the size of the footing so everything will be mentioned in this drawing and uh, the person who does the execution he knows he knows all these things he, he can understand all these things based on that he is going to do the execution so this is the first drawing we are going to do that is called as that is called as footing foundation layout or footing layout right along with that we are going to release the next drawing that is called as column layout because in the architectural plan we saw only the column but we never saw what is the size of the column what are the you know uh, reinforcement that is going to come in that column what are the different diameter of the bar that you are going to put up what are the lateral tests that you are going to put up all those things you are never you are not going to get in architectural drawing those things you are going to get in the structural drawings that too in the column layout you can see here right it's written column layout so all these are the column layout all these are the column layout what you can see and these are the size of the column let us say c1 column c2 column c3 column it's written here you can see right c1 column c4 column c3 column so whatever is written here the same has been put in the table format and you can see c3 c4 c5 column how many numbers of c1 columns are there what is the size of the column that is 10 inch by 1 feet by 6 inch 10 inch by 1 feet by 6 inch 10 inch by 1 feet by 6 inch and what is the reinforcement that you are going to provide in that particular column whether you are using 12 diameter bar or whether you, you whether you are using 16 diameter bar so everything will be mentioned in this drawing you can see a 12 diameter bar we need to put up we need to put 12 diameter bar we need to put 16 diameter bar in the column 3 c3 we need to put 12 diameter bar of 12 numbers in c4 column all these things we are going to release again once that is done the next drawing will be the plinth it's a column reinforcement again it's the same thing then we are going to release the uh, plinth beam layout drawing so this is how the, let me show it yeah so this is called as plinth beam layout you can see it here right so this is called as plinth beam layout so this is a plinth beam layout what is the size of your plinth beam what is the name of a plinth beam everything everything we are going to release one by one again we'll try to if there is a staircase so this is how a staircase drawing looks so we have put up the staircase I, i'll show you the staircase in that particular building right for that we need to release the drawings how your staircase is going to come what is the rise what is the thread so everything we are going to put up here this is how you are taking the up from here you are going to take a turn so this is how your staircase lo uh, drawing looks along with that you have a ground floor planning so each and every drawing we are going to release one by one as a structural engineer i'm going to release the drawings i hope you guys have got a understanding how all these drawings are going to look yeah we'll go back to that uh, ppt again so once we release all the drawings to the client what will happen the client 
the client will give work of execution the client you are the client to me right so the client will give work of execution to whomever he wants right he's so uh, let us say uh, i have a client somewhere from delhi so in a delhi there is some contractor who can do all this execution so he'll do he'll give this uh, work the he has to put up the structure now so that work will be done by the contractor who will take this contract so what will happen he is going to do the execution of this project so far we were in the planning stage then we entered into the designing i mean then we entered into the analysis and the design once the analysis and the design got over we released the drawings to the client saying that uh, saying that for this particular building this is the size of the footing you need to put up these are the dimensions of the column beams and all then based on that the execution of the project will happen the first thing what we do is the surveying or the soil testing so usually if it is a small project we don't do soil testing and all but uh, if it is a big project and uh, if the client insists then we do the soil testing so the soil testing will help us uh, i mean the soil testing has to be done first and only then the footing layout and the building will be designed okay the soil testing will be done first and based on that this analysis will be done and you know, i'll explain it here the soil testing will be done this will help you what is the bearing capacity of the soil that you have in your plot how much load that particular soil has to be, uh, soil can take because ultimately the entire load of the structure has to be passed to the footing and the, from the footing it will go to the soil so soil should have that capacity to take that much amount of load that is why we first test the soil to make sure whether that particular soil can take the load or not so that is usually what we do first after that we do the analysis uh, we do the surveying of the plot and after that we do the marking and the excavation right whatever drawing i have released now footing drawing the where is that footing exactly coming in your particular plot all those things the contractor will do all these things at at that particular site then the pcc all these things i have covered in my entire uh, course what you can see the execution part so my entire course is for more than 20 hours where i have explained you everything how this uh, marking is done how the laying of pcc will be done how the shuttering works then we have a reinforcement works concreting footing all the finishing activities everything is explained in the course so this is what the course is all about this part the execution part i have explained everything right so once everything is done let us say the same building what it what what I, I planned and designed for you that building is put up in your particular plot where you wanted it to put up and once that is done the what will happen the final handing over the project to the client you are the client so i've, I've, I've done the analysis i have done the planning i've done the analysis and design i have released the drawings to you you have given that work to the contractor whom you like or whom you gave the work and that contractor has put up the entire building and finally that building will be handed over to you and once that building is handed over to you he is going to get the money for the work he has done so that money what you are going to pay him that depends on how you make the agreements usually it's not like once a building is completed you are not going to make a payment to that 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 will not happen so every let us say once all the footings are done you are going to uh, you know uh, make the payment to him or let us say after uh, every month you are going to give a payment to him or let us say uh, once the footing and the uh column is casted you are going to release the drawings it depends on your agreement it depends on the client and the contractor it it depends on your agreement how you are going to uh, release the money so our that is not my concern that is a concern of a client how he is going to do all these things right so this is so finally you are going to do the payment to that guy uh, to the client and to the contractor i mean the client will do the payment to the contractor and the same thing will happen here when i has a structural engineer and has an architect when i have done all these drawings right i have given you a drawing then i have given you all this footing layout column layout plane beam layout. again the client will do a payment for me as well he has to do the payment to the architect and the structural engineer along with that he has to do the payment to the uh, contractors the contractor will do the execution whereas a structural engineer will do the planning and also the uh, you know uh, uh, all these uh, details is going to release to the client yeah i hope it's understood up to here so this is a complete course on building construction step by step but this particular thing i wanted you to explain so that you get an overall idea how the entire construction sequence is going to happen so i'll take another one minute uh, so as i mentioned you we are going to make use of the uh, software like etabs or stat pro to do the analysis also in companies what we do is we make use of uh, excel sheets so in this excel sheets we are going to do all the calculations if you are from the civil background uh, you might be knowing all these things uh, like 
what is the size of the column and what is the grade of a concrete you are going to use what is the grade of a steel you are going to use for that particular grade what is the load coming for that particular load what should be the size of my column so all these calculations is going to tell me whether my footing is safe or not so all these things we are going to use and we are going to do the designing right so there are many excel sheets even if you want to do the beam so this is how the excel sheet for the beam looks let us say i have a beam here on it beam i'm applying a load for that particular beam my for that particular load my beam is going to bend so if i want to stop that bending i need to put the reinforcement there so how many number of reinforcement i have to put all these things we do with the help of a software called etabs stad pro uh, we can make use of those software if not there are excel sheets what is available with the help of excel sheets what we do is we do all this uh, all this analysis again if you want to uh, put the slab like how much load is coming on the slab right how, how what, what is the load coming on the slab what is the reinforcement i need to provide in the slab what is the thickness of the slab all those things with the help of this excel sheets we are going to do the design and we are going to get that this much is the amount of reinforcement you have to provide based on that we do as a structural engineers we try to do all these things right i hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, lecture and uh, if you guys are really interested uh, to see how the entire uh, if, if you guys are really interested to learn all the execution of the project uh, you can enroll into this class so it's more than 20 hours and you'll re really enjoy the entire course yeah uh, thank you everyone and a happy learning